Hello friends. Welcome to this channel. In the previous video session, we saw what is Q and what is standard Q in SQS. Now in this video, we will see how to create a standard SQS queue using AWS Management Console. So without any further ado, let's get start the session. So here you can see, I am logged into my AWS Management Console. Let's search for simple queue service. Click on it. So once you are in the SQS service, click on create queue here. So basically, there are two types of SQS queue, standard and FIFO. So for this session, we are going to create a standard queue. So I have selected standard, and here, I am going to name it, my demo queue. Now here, I am going to leave all these parameters as default, but to just you give you a quick introduction about what each of this means. So visibility timeout means, when you send a message to SQS queue, if one of the consumers receives that message, so for 30 seconds any other different consumer will not be able to see that message. So that's what this visibility timeout means. And the message retention period, as it is like a self-explanatory, the message is returned for up to 4 days. So delivery delay. Delivery delay basically if you want extra time to process the message, you can delay the next message that is coming into the queue by a specified time. So if you want let's say 2 minutes to process the each message, you can set the delivery delay to 2 minutes here, so that like I mean you can process that message after the first message is processed, so that's what delivery delay means. And this is the maximum message size, so I have just set it to 256 kilobits that's the maximum size, and this is the receive message wait time. So this basically like when you start polling for the messages, this is the maximum time the polling will wait for the message to arrive. So we will see this after creating the SQS queue. So I am not going to change any of this, but you can set these parameters as per your requirement. So in the access policies is basically the permissions, who has the permission to you know write a message to the SQS queue, and who has the permissions to read the messages from the SQS queue. So by default only the queue owner has a permission. So you can if you want to specify a certain AWS account or IAM users or roles you can give it here. And you can select this as well. So but for this video I am going to select only this. Only the queue owner. And also if you want you can edit this inline policy here. So let's keep it basic and we'll select this default. So I am going to leave this redrive allow policy as default disabled. And encryption basically you can enable it or disable it depending on your requirement. If you enable there are two encryption methods available. One is server-side encryption and the other is the key management service. So you can choose any of those but for this session I'm just going to disable the encryption. And the dead later queue. So basically if there are any faulty messages, or any undeliverable messages. So if you enable this and you can point these messages to be sent to a different SQS queue. So all those failed messages faulty messages will be stored in that SQS queue. So I'm going to disable it for now. And tags. These are just to identify the resource, or labeling of the resources. So with this parameter set, let's click on the create queue here. So now as you can see, the queue is successfully created. Now let's just test this SQS queue quickly. Let's click on send and receive messages here. So let's say, Hi, from S3 Cloud Hub. We can set the delivery delay here manually. I am just going to leave it 0 seconds, and let's click on send message here. So now my message has been sent. Now I am going to come here and I am going to pull for the messages. So if you see here, I got this message. Here the body is. Hi from S3 Cloud Hub. And there is all this metadata information of like MDS of message body, size and all the metadata information related to this message. So once you are done, you can delete this message as well. So let me delete this message now. So now the message is deleted. So if I stop polling now, it will basically not receive any message because I have already received and processed that message. So that's a very basic demo of how to create an SQS topic, and how to send and receive the messages using AWS Management Console. So that's it, I hope you found it useful. So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, 
feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.